Hi guys, it's Waited, and I've had a number of questions about the front side of a pour on glass versus the back side. So I have some of my pores here, and they are as acrylic skins, meaning I peeled them off of the glass so I can show you the front and the back easily. So here we go. This is the front of an acrylic pour that did not turn out. It was too thick over here and it cracked. That was my fault. And it's missing a piece because that was a particularly lovely section that I used um, for a pendant. So uh, these are acrylic skins are great for using uh, different things. <clears throat> I make jewelry with them and I make um, some mosaics with them. So this is the front and you can see that it does have some very interesting areas but it, it was a failure and I, it was you know parts of it are interesting and this is what the back looks like and again your heavier pigments will fall to the bottom of your pore and so that's what's going to show up on the back side of an acrylic pore sometimes the front side is better sometimes the back side but usually the back side is not that lovely so again there's the front, okay, and then the back. The back is usually softer. All right, that's one, and here is another one. This is the front of a. It's a basically a white and gold acrylic pour. So there we go, and I didn't like it because it's got all these little white spots through it that I just didn't care for so I will be recycling this into either paper mosaics or what have you and then there's the back and I don't know if I oh this was a pour over a you know I'm not gonna say this shape either makes me think I used a cookie cutter or it was a pour over a bottle but the back has got some very, this is a very bland section of it, but I really like this movement that I have on the outside. This had a titanium buff in it, and titanium buff is a heavier pigment, so that tended to sink to the bottom of it. But again, there's the front, and there's the back. So, and I keep these separated between sheets of paper. I unbrilliantly tried um, plastic Ziploc bags and some of these I had to use a, a razor blade under the corner to get them to peel off. So there we go. Here is another one. This is the front. This to me was a failure. Look, this is, that's pouring medium right there. It gapped and it just is not smooth looking. It has a, a rougher kind of texture, but it is an interesting piece to use in other projects. And then this is what the back looked like, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, again, if it hadn't been such a failure here with this clear area, I thought the back side was pretty neat. So, front more vivid, more intense colors, more detail, back, just a softer look, but quite a pretty look really. And this one, this is the front. This is a very, very luminous piece. Um, I didn't necessarily care for the pour itself, but I do like segments of it and there is no glare on that that is the the liquid mirror coming through it's very brilliant very intense and uh, the liquid mirror is by tri art and a little bit goes a long way which is a good thing because it's one of their more expensive paints and then this is the back which again that's it's to me very interesting uh, it's a softer look overall, but it doesn't have the detail and you won't see the cells and that sort of thing. But 
front with all that brilliant liquid mirror. You don't see so much of it on the back though. You do in a couple few little areas, but for the most part, if you're going to pour for the back side of glass, you wouldn't want to use that liquid mirror. It's too expensive and it really doesn't show up except on the front. So, there we go. I love this. I can't wait to make some pendants with it. So, uh, this is um, a piece of a pour that I was just trying to get off the glass until I, I started looking at it a little more closely. Ooh, 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 save it. Uh, so it's got some areas. I don't know. It looks like something got it. Nope. Oh, that's paper. Okay, there's some paper stuck to it. But this is the front, and I didn't like it. It had my paint was not good. I threw this uh, titanium white away because that's what was making all those little spots that was on this pour and on the previous golden white one. So I love the colors in it, but um, I'm not so thrilled with the white spots. And then here, that's just where something stuck to it. And then here's the back. Again, a softer look. The colors uh, are not, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous area to me. So uh, the colors are not as well mixed and it's interesting, but I don't know that it would really hold your interest by itself. It doesn't have the movement that the front side has. And here's just a couple more little, I love this one. That little corner I thought was particularly interesting. And there again, there's the front. And there's the back. One of the things I can tell you usually about the front and the back is the back where it comes off the glass is smoother and has more reflection, is more reflective. So that's one reason I can tell so easily which one is which. So putting that on a piece of paper. And so these pores that I didn't like that didn't turn out, uh, I do like the fact that if they're on glass I can just peel them off and use them. Uh, this is one, again it's missing some spots that I made um, independence, where I did use uh, magenta, that may be a lizard and crimson, I, it's been long enough ago, something stuck to it here and here, I didn't have it protected, and it just, this is liquid mirror, it's too bland, that's very boring, but I do like some of the movement in here that I could use. And here's the back side. Again, softer. This was from a, a pour over a bottle. And this is, uh, if I hadn't used it for jewelry, this would have made a great little flower in a mixed media piece. In fact, I could probably still work a flower out of that, just cutting that petal a little bit short. So it's, um, it's really cool. It's very interesting. And I really did like the back side of this much better than the front side. Though again, the front side, at least in this area, had more movement. Um, this had a little bit of the liquid mirror in it. I can tell right here. But this was... Uh, shoot. I can't think of the name. But it tends to move over and creep Pebio. It's a Pebio paint, acrylic paint. Um, it's one of their, they had two paints, Prism and I want to say Moon something or other. And the, the paint when you mix it, when you let it sit in a pour, it tends to come over and coat the top of your other paints. So I still haven't moved that uh, from moving studios all over again. So I don't have it here to look up in handy. I may do a, a video on things to look for and not to look for and everything. But so that, and there's the back, again, softer. This is uh, some pieces that actually, they were not done on glass. This is the bottom of the container. I use a plastic container to do my pores in. And then a lot of times I'll peel up the the paint that has accumulated at the bottom because again this is 
very cool and interesting and I can use it in paper mosaics or in jewelry so this is the front side and there's the back side it's just more muted so again front side here and then the back side that I peeled up and you know some of that's got really really great intricate detail and movement that I think is so cool so a lot of times when I peel paint up I save it from my container as well and since I'm showing you back sides and then this is the last one I really this is a this was a neat pour but it, it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to and of course piece missing because I used it in some jewelry and this has a little bit of liquid mirror this was done with um, acrylic ink and pouring medium maybe or flow troll I honestly this light I don't remember but it, it just it has some really neat that's something that's some uh, gilding flakes that got on it it just it has some really neat areas but as a whole I didn't care for it this is some of the liquid mirror it may be showing up white for you but it, it's a really luminous intense uh, pour just really neat detail but this is the front side and then this is the back that to me looks like a galaxy uh, I think the back was really cool and I debated for a long time about whether I was going to keep it uh, and just use the back of it because again it's just got that galaxy look to it here's a little bit of the liquid mirror that did come through to the back but again I'm using acrylic ink so that makes a huge difference um, if I had used titanium white this would have been a lot probably basically white on the back side but I, I, oh, I think it is so cool I really do. So while it didn't do for me what I wanted it to, um, and you can see a score mark right there from when I moved, removed it from the, the glass, I do intend to use different parts of it. So <clears throat> there you have it. There's the fronts and the backs of these different uh, acrylic pores on glass. And you can see one reason why. I really like doing that because it gives me two chances if a pour comes out in a way that I didn't expect or you never know what to expect but if it didn't turn out in a way that I like it then I always have a chance that I like the backside and if it doesn't work out at all then I remove it and I can use it in mixed media or make jewelry with it so there you have it that's the front and the back of a whole bunch of um, acrylic pours on glass and thank you so much guys bye